Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now. With your hosts, Brian, John, and Elaine. <laughs> Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Connington. You'll obviously notice that I'm not joined by uh, my usual co-host, John Elaine. This is a special bonus uh, episode for this week. Um, so while we were gone uh, during uh, the past couple of weeks due to the short film that I was working on, um, John, who really hit it out of the park, started uh, getting some really awesome interviews with uh, some uh film uh, actors as well as documentarians and uh, authors and uh, the first one of these really awesome interviews uh, is kind of a treat because uh, we talked really badly on this movie a couple weeks back um, Anna Nicole Smith's uh, Skyscraper which was really terrible so uh, it was a surprise that we were able to get a hold of one of the actors uh, from Skyscraper, Jonathan Fuller, who you might remember played Jacques, the Frenchman. Um, so he did this really awesome interview that uh, I can't wait to show you guys. Uh, so I'm going to leave and throw it over to John and Jonathan. And I uh, just want to remind you guys, have a very safe and happy Halloween. And uh, we'll be back at you again uh, next week. So here is John with Jonathan Fuller. Do you like the solar system? Yeah, it's quite cool, planets and stuff. Alright, all right, everyone, this is uh, John Wolfscroft with the Cinema Psycho Show here, and I'm glad that I'm able to be joined here uh, by Jonathan Fuller. Thank you for uh, uh, joining me here. He is one of the actors in the film that we reviewed uh, a couple weeks back now here, Skyscraper. Uh, but he is so much more than that. He is a very accomplished actor, which I will let him explain uh, here. So if you could uh, give us a little background of yourself here before we kind of jump into some skyscraper questions, I would greatly appreciate it. Sure, that'd be fine, John. Hi, you cine- cinema psychos. How's everybody doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as John said, I've got kind of an interesting background here. Uh, I was born and raised here in Birmingham, Alabama, where I am actually able to run a film career from now because of the digital age. Um, I left Birmingham as soon as I possibly could after uh, high school and went to college in Chicago and lived in Chicago, New York, and L.A. doing a lot of theater. And in Los Angeles in the 90s and early 2000s was doing a lot of diehard ripoffs and a lot of different films, a couple with Stuart Gordon, over in Italy, the guy that uh, directed Reanimator, whom I had met in Chicago and worked with in the theater. And um, uh, long story short, uh, family illness brought me back to Birmingham, and I taught at my alma mater, became like the artistic director of the Alabama School of Fine Arts, which is like the state magnet school, for a few years while I was... Um, taking care of a, a relative and, um, and then, um, uh, started, a, uh, Birmingham's only union theater company ever, uh, which we called city equity theater and, uh, did a lot, about 20 different shows and, uh, had a very good run of that. But then, uh, that didn't like a lot of nonprofit theaters. That one didn't quite do the long haul. So, um, by then, the film industry in Atlanta has really had really taken off, and also uh, it had really changed from um, being analog to digital. So that now I don't even have to um, go over to Atlanta most of the time to audition. I have an i I take myself on my iPhone. I have a little setup in my basement with lights. And a nice neutral backdrop, and I audition for roles. And I've got, by the time this is airing, I've got one uh, that will be in the theaters called Bigger, that uh, stars Julianne Howe and Taylor Hocklin, uh, about Joe Weider, the guy that found, uh, discovered Arnold Schwarzenegger. And nice. uh, so that, that should be opening October 12th. 
uh, nationwide. So I've got a nice, nice role in that one. So. Yeah. yeah please send me the, uh, the details on that. I'll make sure we put that in the, uh, in the, in the lower part of this video here. Um, but yeah, I, I remember I was, um, on the younger side and just seeing, I think I, extra was on. I'm not sure why I was watching it. And they brought up Anna Nicole Smith has, you know, a movie coming out. She's entering movies. And I just remember kind of, you know, I mean, I was on the other side just giggling because, you know, I, she was a model and then playboy. And when you're a little kid, that's, you know, haha, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, but a very yeah. big model in Playboy. Yeah. Always right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I, you know, it was when the Rocks movie Skyscraper came out earlier this year, I said to, you know, the rest of the uh, the hosts of the podcast, why don't we, like, just for irony's sake, you know, go back and watch, you know, Anna Nicole Skyscraper. It's the exact same name. I don't even know if there was any issue with that naming-wise. I, yeah. I, I don't think you could copyright a title. They could have called yeah. it Death of a Salesman if they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Death of a Salesman's or something. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. right, right. Um, but yeah, how did you um, how did you come across this uh, particular movie? How did how did I get involved? Um, there was um, during that period in the '90s, there was a, a, a series where there were a lot. Uh, after Die Hard came out, there were a lot of Die Hard ripoffs because it was such a great formula where you would have. A group of terrorists, to, you know, X from with X on their mind, yeah. <laughs> go to X facility and yeah. one lone fill in the blank person, you know, cop, FBI agent in skyscrapers. Uh, um, uh, in that movie, it was one lone helicopter pilot takes a, you know, takes all of them on and wipes them all out. Yeah. So I found it doubly ironic that skyscraper. Just like Die Hard was like Die Hard in a skyscraper. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and, and you probably you probably know this uh, about like pitching a movie. You know, it, it's this movie meets this movie. Uh, you know, and like Under Siege was this is Die Hard on a ship. You know, and Speed was right. Die Hard on a bus. How do you pitch a movie and say this is Die Hard? You know, <laughs> I think basically, I think basically, uh, Anna Nicole had a. A contract with uh, PM Entertainment, which is standard. I can't remember the name of the first producer, but Joseph Mary uh, was the second producer, and so it's P and M for Mary Entertainment. And that she did uh, to the limit with them, which was uh, one of their films, mm -hmm. and, and Skyscraper. So I, she was under at least a two-film contract with them. So I guess they just said, well, let's just do Die Hard and put it on a sky. <laughs> but we got Anna Nicole Smith. I mean, how different can you be? She's a lot yeah. better looking than Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. She's got more hair and more yeah. other things, too, you know? So so, so that kind of answers, yeah. I, I've always wondered if, um, and you kind of answered it now, but was this movie, like, did they have a script that was too similar to Die Hard? And they said, well, we need to put somebody like Anna Nicole Smith in so we could go see her on the box art and buy her. Well, this was this was a project where she started. It was I, her, right? I don't know the exact answer for that, but I have a fi uh, feeling they just said, let's do a Die Hard-esque film. And we've got Anna Nicole Smith. What can we do with her? How can we make her fit into this? And yeah. not just be like Bruce Willis's character. Uh, so they had her one be a helicopter pilot that you know landed on the building and find works kind of from the top down. And she's a mother also, and her own yeah. son played uh, right. played her son, yeah. you know, in the film. So you know he was like a you know eight or nine year old kid running around at that time. You know, and he's a nice kid, sweet yeah. kid. You know. Mm -hmm. And what was what was it like working with her around that time? It was, um, you know, it was interesting. I I didn't actually have any scenes with her, but I, the first time I met her, I walked in the room with, where she was, um, and she was with Ray Martino, uh, who I don't, I think might have, I think they had a thing going on at the time, but they, she was dressed in full white lingerie. And I just walked in the room and it was really rather <laughs> breathtaking because yeah. she was like, hi, how are you? You know, and gave, yeah. you know, but there was a certain offness to her. And I don't know if your fans know this or really know how public a crash she had. 
And this was kind of the beginning of that. Um, she was, they had Entertainment Tonight come in and like film her doing a scene of like landing the helicopter, even though she was just seated in the helicopter and she could barely speak her lines because the drugs were starting to really take effect, addle her and be a, a constant threat to her. So. Yeah. And uh, oddly enough, I mean, that wasn't the first time that I'd seen that happen. I, I did a film called Ground Zero, which was Blood oh. Fist Six with Don the Dragon Wilson. And okay. the Dal Sassoon's daughter, Kat Sassoon, was, I mean, she was in her trailer shooting up, you know, some of the times. And unfortunately, yeah. she's, she has passed away, you know, in the same sort of um, OD situation, man. You know, it's a, it's a very tragic sort of Hollywood story, but, you know. Not that uncommon, right? right. Yeah. Now, you're you're a professional actor, and I'm not taking any away from her. But she was a model that that went in and into the world of acting. Obviously, it's you know you can be empathetic. Uh, oh, every I think everybody was. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. finish what oh, you were saying. But, yeah. but to, to some degree, you know, it, is there also a point where you think like, you know, God, I, I just wish there was a little bit more professionalism from, from a person like this in those kind of situations. I was, I yeah. definitely felt that with, uh, cause I had scenes with Kat Sassoon and, and, uh, you know, there was one shot where she had to like take a gun out and say, come on guys and walk across the room. And yeah. it took like 15 takes for her to do that. And so, yeah. God, you know, and it was like, you know, one in the morning by that point, too. So we were all pretty beat. Now, with Adam Nicole, um, I got just kind of, you always kind of get a, a vibe on the set of what the crew, they're a very, very good barometer of what's going on. And so the time I was there with them, um, at first they were very, you know, nervous and then it kind of moved into got you know kind of a, a caretaking situation you know let's make sure she's okay and um and that's that's when i left i was off the shoot i don't know if it got to you know like with that other situation where everyone was kind of getting fed up with it you yeah. know yeah but she had the title role and she you know or the title role she was the lead she was the yeah. reason the movie was being made so a lot of that kind of behavior gets because of the money factor just gets supported in Hollywood. You know, you work, they work around, we all work around it. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Um, now I, before you answer this, cause I, I have a theory now, did you, how much freedom did you have in terms of, you know, your character and in, in this movie and you know, how it was presented? Cause I just have a feeling that you and Gary, I, I believe it's I'm Hoff. I'm not sure exactly. He played the, the security guard. It seemed like you two guys like, and I could be dead wrong about this, like brought a whole lot to the roles that maybe weren't there on the page. Is, was no. it all there? Or is that, was that you? That was, I, uh, I will say that a lot of that was me. I mean, when I was doing all these films, I, I happened to be pretty good with accents. So I would just sort of bring some, let's make this guy French or whatever. Yeah. You know? and, uh, that would just sort of springboard me into to a, a certain, um, you know, a characterization or whatever. I don't want to say caricature, but, uh, you know, but it would give me something, a handle to work with. Uh, and it's something even with my agency in Atlanta now that I'm, you know, I'm, they know that I'm very good with accents. So I get sent up. Sometimes there was a film that was out called Geostorm recently with, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, they had a scene where there was kind of like a, um, a United Nations scene and they had me read for the German ambassador. And then a few days later they said, well, could he be like, could he try the Norwegian ambassador ambassadors? I, <laughs> Shot him a Norwegian accent. And then the, I think it was one other, uh, you know, something South African. So I gave that a shot. I didn't get any of them, but yeah. they were interested yeah. enough. I just yeah. told them they wanted to see, you know. So, yeah. Gotcha. That's yeah. That's very interesting. Now, um, I I've seen your demo reel and some of your other work here, and um, you know, from the few times I've talked to you, you know, in, in our correspondence, like you're you you're a very nice guy, and I've, I've always I've wondered this. Thank it, you. Yeah, it seems like always 
the extremely nice actors end up playing the swarmy guy or the villain or the vile <laughs> guy or the sociopath. Is it like is it the one eighty? Is it the guy that always plays the hero? Or is that guy like a complete jerk and all the people that play all the sociopath maniacs are super nice people? <laughs> Not always. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh uh There have been some you know, some people that uh I won't. I won't name any names because I really can't. I've had some pretty good experiences overall on movie sets because I think everybody's really, re- honestly, very grateful to be working, yeah. and I find people to be really, really nice. Um, I just finished this film. I think that I just said, you know, bigger. It's going to be out in the theaters by the time this is up, and Taylor Hockner, Hocklin was the lead, and it's about the guys that discovered Arnold Schwarzenegger and made the, you know, and started the whole bodybuilding movement. And he was really a nice guy, you know, and uh, he was, he, you know, really behind this whole film uh, that is, like, really into it. He's he's the guy that plays Superman on the TV show Supergirl now. Oh, okay. And even, yeah. ironically, I asked him and I found out in our conversation that he was the kid that played Tom Hanks' son in The Road to Perdition, which opened up a whole... No uh, way! That's wait. one of my favorite films of all time. That's amazing. That's a great yeah. film, you know? Yeah. So, you know, uh, I just watched it again recently, and, and I was like, well, how was it working with Paul Newman? And he said, I had heard he was like a really big actor, but I didn't really know who he was at the time. <laughs> he had this great <laughs> scheme with Paul Newman, you know? Yeah. He said Tom Hanks was as, you know, as gracious as a guy as, as could be, yeah. you know, really, because huh. really wanted to form that, that good relationship with him. You know? well, the, well, there goes my theory out the window, because Tom always plays nice guys, and I've never heard a bad thing about him. So. Yeah, well, he's, I think yeah. he's, he's a, gosh, he's a real choice, you know, example of that. There's a guy, you know, Ice-T, he was on TV recently, and, uh, was talking about like, you know, he's been doing SU, uh, SVU for 20 years now. They're in their 20th season. That's a, it's an incredible run. Yeah. And, you know, I did a, I did a movie with Ice and he was like kind of, okay, you know, this is, everybody was really tired making this film because there were a lot of night shoots on it. And, um, right. but he was talking about, uh, somebody asked him like, how is it that you keep it fresh? You know, and you keep a good demeanor about like what you're, what you're doing and how you're acting and what, you know, what's going on in the thing. And he said, well, you just got to remember, you got to think back to a level of what was fucked up in your life and realize how far you come. Yeah. From that. And then everything else you go like, damn, I'm here making a movie. I'm making a TV show. I mean, yeah. what have I got to complain about with anything? You know, it's, it's by far it you can put it in into perspective and you know it's a, they call it a screenplay they call them plays for a good reason because you can get out there and have a lot of fun yeah, yeah. now um Speaking of Skyscraper, um, was that just something that, you know, was uh, just something, a project that you, you jumped in and then finished, or was it was something, did you, and then just move on to the next year, did you kind of keep an eye on it or, or wonder, you know? Sure, I, I keep an eye on everything yeah. that I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I was brought in for this, a lot of the uh, scenes that I did with other people were spaced out over a few weeks, but... It seems like a majority of my scenes in that film were me, like at the command center with like a headset on, you know, and they shot all those in like, you know, we did that in an hour, you know. (laughs) Then we just kept, all right, so let's do the one where you say they're coming into the the lower, you know, they're in the, the, they're coming into the lower back door, you know, click into that and they're coming into the lower back door, watch yourself, you know, and then let's go into the next one and then just try to build. And, you know, know what the build of the script is and how it was going to be, you know, how it was going to play. But yes, of course, I watched what was, you know, the, the, uh, progression of it, uh, to find out what was going to happen with it. Um, you know, and I knew Skyscraper went right to video. Uh, I've got another film, um, 
that I'm, I've got a lead in that I'm very excited about uh, called yeah. uh, Rightful that mm -hmm. uh, is in post-production right now. And our uh, we had a great director named Andre Alpha who was really good at working with actors um, like before – before a certain scene that took place early in the morning where my character walked out of a diner, he said, what did you just have to eat in there? And I was like, oh, wow, yeah, okay. I had e eggs and some some uh, hash browns, so, yeah, I'm feeling kind of like a little yucky from that, you know, or, you know, it's, it's yeah. that kind of, but he would ask stuff like that all the way through, and it's, this is a basic huh. zombie movie. Yeah. With uh, a girl named Laura Flannery and Adam uh, Steiner, I think, and Terry Malam, who have been in a lot of other films that uh, you'll recognize them if you see them. And um, we're just waiting to find. I'm waiting to find out the word on that. You know what? You know it's getting close to getting finished, and we'll find out if it gets a theatrical release or if it goes right to video. Uh, there's always that. You don't. You don't ne necessarily know. You know, what's going to happen with them, you know? Well, that's funny how different the world is now. Like, you know, say when Skyscraper came out, the there was a somewhat of a stigma of like, oh, it went straight to video that's or something like that. Sure. Now, it, now it's like, oh, great. It went straight to the vid, you know, straight to video. Almost like it's almost its own honor because that's where the great, you know, things are coming now and all the independent work is, oh, is coming. I, you know, it's like, uh, when some of these films of mine came out, it was like, yeah, it went straight to video, and then, oh, yeah, it went to Showtime, and it yeah. went to Cinemax. And now it's like, oh, my God, it got a release on Showtime, on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, like, huge, yeah. you know, to have that happen. So, you know, we really are in a golden age of TV yeah. right now. Uh, the stuff that's being produced for those streaming video companies, it's, it's really interesting to watch how stuff – evolves and changes you know so yeah and what's the uh what's the title of that one again oh it's called rightful right rightful. Now. yes as in yes. as opposed to wrongful right. no, rightful. <laughs> and it's about um based on a true story about two african-american men that brothers that owned a huge plot of land and were wrongly executed so that some white South Carolinians, two guys, you know, could take it over or it could get into the hands of some, some white people. And, uh, I'm playing kind of a greasy Southern lawyer in this one. Yeah. And, um, Terry Milan plays, uh, a kind of a greasy Southern judge. And, uh, we are like orchestrating the takeover of this land a good hundred years later. And, yeah. We find out that there's another relative who's a young white woman that's brought in, uh, or a woman of mixed race, I guess, and, and, and the brothers don't like that the land's being sold, so they rise out of the graves and stalk a lot of people, and a lot of people get killed that's by them. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool, you know. Huh. I mean, it's not, not as if it hasn't been done before, but, um, we had a great yeah. DP on it, a guy named, uh, Amza uh, Moglan. Um, I guess he's, I, I'm not sure exactly where um, Amza was from, but God, the thing looks, from what I saw, the way they smoked up the scenes and played with the light, the thing looks great. I mean, it's really, cool. yeah, it's very cool. I love making these things and watching movie magic, you know, yeah, and, and all that stuff. And the, I won't tell you how I die, but it's, it's pretty nasty. You know? <laughs> and I love, I love, uh, you know, I love uh, working with special effects guys too, you know, and makeup people. Yeah. Is there, um, is there a trailer out for that one? Like on YouTube or anything? Not like yet. That? Not yet. Yeah. Okay. But it's listed on, it's listed on Internet Movie Database. And I think okay. there's, if they, if anyone, uh, probably, Google rightful the movie dot com, you know, or something like that. There'll be its own, its own website and it's listed on internet movie database. Yeah. So, uh, but from, I was in touch with, uh, Andre a few weeks ago and he was saying that, that they're finishing up post production. It's moving along. So hopefully we'll, uh, you know, we'll be seeing that one soon. I just found out like today about, um, cause we're filming this a couple weeks before like two weeks before 
uh, bigger comes out. I just found out yeah. today that what the release date was. You know, so it's like, oh my God, this is great. You yeah. know, it's October 12th, man, it's going to be in the theaters. So that's very exciting for me. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, just kind of like one, uh, one or two things to, to kind of wrap things up here. Um, sure. Yeah. So were you aware at all of like Skyscraper kind of becoming like a cult film to, to a certain degree? Or was it just kind of like people that, start podcasts like me that just kind of picked up on that. It's, it's, you know, it, it is funny how these things happen. You don't expect it to necessarily. Um, and then I've got other films out there that are not cult films, but Skyscraper is, Castle Freak is, that I did yeah. with Stuart Gordon. Big cult thing. And I've gone to a lot of horror conventions and, and things. And that was like my chance to, you know, with Lon Chaney Sr., kind of thing, one of those Quasimodo kind of makeup jobs, and I always had wanted to do that sort of thing, but I had no idea that thing was going to, like, you know, I, I did it for my own reasons, because I wanted to <laughs> go through the torture of that makeup, I guess, uh, and also because we shot it in, in Italy, in a castle, which is, you know, really one of those perks of uh, of doing jobs like this sometimes, but I really didn't have any, any idea that that would that one would pick up as like a cult film. And to a certain extent, Pit and the Pendulum is sort of known that way. And there are a few others, you know, but you just never can tell yeah. what's going to happen with these things, you know? And do you prefer being like, you know, quote unquote, a character actor, or do you like being a leader? Is it just whatever, if the role's good, the role's they're good? All, to me, they're all yeah. characters. If it's yeah. a lead role, uh, for me, you know, for me, a lead is a character. Uh, you know, it depends. You know, I could be slapping on an accent with, you know, a lead role as well, or uh, it depends on what they call for. But I approach everything um, as a trained actor. Like when I did Castle Freak, I drew on the Caliban from uh, The Tempest by Shakespeare. You know, that kind of the idea of the monster that that elicits some pity, you know, and Stuart wanted that out of me, you know, and, and cho literally came over to my house for dinner one night and dropped this bomb on me that he wanted me to play this role, you know, because of the he knew I liked Lon Chaney Sr. And, and Boris Karloff and, you know, was totally into the horror scene. And he said, I think you'd be perfect for this. And it was like, sign me up and, you know, totally. But you know, I, I, I like doing, I'll do a one line thing in a movie and have a good time. And, and I know that I can carry a film too, as well as, uh, you know, being my first film was a young hero and pit in the pendulum. And then I moved into all these terrorist bad guys. And now I'm, you know, doing, I'm age wise, I'm getting sent out more for like doctors and lawyers and uh businessmen now just you know just because of the way i look yeah. you know? so and that's a big thing in film is how you look you know and fitting the role you know gotcha uh one more time please uh tell us uh the the uh the names and uh i know there's only da a date for the one but uh the two films that are coming right. out please please hit us up one more time here on this first the yeah. first one that it will be in the theaters by the time this one uh it, this is released is called bigger and it's the joe weeder story with uh and that goes into the theaters on october the 12th and the zombie movie the horror film is called rightful and uh it is in post production right now and we are we will see where that goes. You know, how the, what the release of that one's gonna be. So thank you for letting me pitch those. I appreciate that, man. Hey, you know <laughs> thank you for giving me your time and, and coming oh. on and just shooting the bowl about skyscraper. I oh, appreciate it. Anytime. Anytime, John. <laughs> yeah. More than happy. Okay. Well, yeah, once again, I appreciate you being a part of this. This was uh, John from the Cinema Psycho Show. i um, having the luxury of speaking to one of the actors from one of the films we had sp uh, watched. Uh, well, I guess we, you listened to and we watched uh, <laughs> Jonathan Flores. So thank you once again for, for being a part of this. And, um, yeah, I really appreciate it. All right. All right. All right. Well, have a good night. and Thank you. Take very care. Much. Goodbye, you psychos. <laughs> <laughs> 
Be sure to like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus, and Psycho Show. You can also find us on the Epicast Network at epicastnetwork.com. If you have a favorite movie or question you want to throw away, contact us at cinemasychoshow.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and iTunes and catch a new episode available every Sunday.